Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Gitsky. Kern County firefighters are on the scene of a propane leak at a local gas station that prompted evacuations. The leak was reported at the Flying J truck stop just off Highway 99 in Merced Avenue outside of Shafter. KCFD says the leak came from a 20,000 gallon tank at the truck stop. The Flying J had to be evacuated along with nearby businesses, but those evacuations have since been lifted. Hazmat crews say the source of the leak is from fittings on the tank. They say a local propane company is making repairs while KCFD monitors the situation. Well, now with sad news, the man who tried rescuing a child in the Kern River was found dead. According to the Kern County Sheriff's Office, yesterday evening, they recovered the body of a missing man from the river in the Upper Ridge Bar area. The man has been missing since Sunday when he was trying to rescue a child and was swept away by the strong currents. Deputies say that man went in after the child about a mile from the Upper Ridge Bar picnic area near Highway 178. Now, officials say the juvenile was safe and out of the water, but water swept the man away, prompting that three-day-long search. Well, just a day after President Trump signed an executive order aimed at addressing the national outcry over police brutality, Senate Republicans were set to unveil that police reform bill. Now, lawmakers from both parties agree now is the time to address attention in the country over police misconduct. However, it seems they could be on a collision course. All communities are laser focused on a response from Washington. We should provide them with a blueprint of what it looks like to restore confidence in the most vulnerable areas of this country. Senator Tim Scott took the lead on the Republicans' police reform bill. The 106-page proposal does not include a federal chokehold ban. State and local governments won't be eligible for grants if they don't enact a ban, except in instances where lives are at risk. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer blasted Republicans for taking a narrow approach. Now is the moment for real, lasting, comprehensive change. We cannot merely make some changes around the margins. Now, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is promising fast action on a newly revealed Republican police reform proposal. McConnell and the other GOP lawmakers held a press conference today on the bill. The Scott bill, headed up by Republican Senator Tim Scott, comes amid nationwide calls for action after high-profile episodes of police brutality. McConnell challenged Democrats to decide whether to block the legislation from advancing or allowing it to come up for debate on the floor. After we do, two circuit judges who are queued up either this week or early next week, we're going to turn to the Scott bill. I'm going to file cloture on the motion to proceed. And our Democratic friends, if they want to make a law and not just try to make a point, I hope they'll join us in getting on the bill and trying to move forward in the way the Senate does move forward when it's trying to actually get an outcome rather than just sparring back and forth. Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer wouldn't say yet Tuesday if Democrats would try to block the bill from floor debate. Schumer said it was too soon to comment because he hasn't seen that bill yet. Well, Bakersfield Congressman Kevin McCarthy joined 17 News to talk about police reform. One topic that came up was the nationwide call for local governments to defund police departments. Now, this, of course, comes following the death of George Floyd last month. McCarthy said the move is one of the biggest mistakes one could make when it comes to police reform. What we need to do is take a three-prong approach. We need better training. And that's the number one thing we need to do. There was a survey out from all the police chiefs. 80% of them said they needed more training. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we have greater transparency. And most importantly, for bad cops to be removed. Now you can watch clips from that interview with Kevin McCarthy on our website, kget.com. Well, more than a week has passed since a Black Lives Matter demonstrator, Robert Forbes, was struck by a motorist in central Bakersfield and later died. Now the family is now pushing for charges to be filed. The past weekend, people came together at Riverwalk as a call for justice for the death of Robert Forbes. Forbes' family is asking the district attorney to take a look at the case to file charges. And the family's attorney says Moore should be arrested for violating California's basic speed law. That requires drivers to maintain a speed safe for the conditions at the time, regardless of what the posted speed limit may be. In this situation, what it meant to have uh, reasonable speed for conditions was that he should have slowed down 
And instead, what we have is uh, a reporter from the Bakersfield, California, indicating that he saw and heard himself that the vehicle accelerated into the hazard. The hazard we now know was a number of people in the roadway that other vehicles stopped and avoided, uh, but that he uh, accelerated into and ran down. The driver, Kenneth Moore, was questioned by BPD, but has since been released. Well, now to the latest on the coronavirus here in Kern County. Public Health confirms 60 new COVID-19 cases and another three deaths. That makes it 3,000 572 cases here locally. Now, more than 1,000 of those are active cases, with most people recovering at home in isolation. Now, 75 people are hospitalized with COVID-19. Our death toll stands at 57. Well, skilled nursing facilities are tasked with taking care of some of our community's most vulnerable citizens, but they've come under fire in Kern County for the mo- their response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, yesterday, Public Health Director Matt Constantine, he blasted some of the state-regulated facilities here in Kern for not doing enough to combat the spread of coronavirus. Basic disease control procedures are not being enforced. When, when, when we're there testing, we, we watched an employee go into their car with their dirty COVID gowns and masks and take off the uh, PPE in their car. That is completely inappropriate. Speaking before supervisors Tuesday morning, Constantine expressed several concerns, noting two facilities, Valley Convalescent Hospital and Kingston Healthcare Center, are facing an uncontrolled outbreak, yet still are admitting new patients. And a reminder, these facilities are solely regulated by the state, which means the state reports the number of cases and deaths associated with skilled nursing facilities. But today, Constant- yesterday, Constantine said the state's numbers are not clear at all. We have now five sources of information we get daily. Every one of those differs. They don't reconcile. I can't get an accurate count of the number of employees that are sick. I can't even get an accurate count of the number of residents that have passed away from COVID-19. If I don't have accurate data, I can't track our progress or how serious it is. Now you can get a drive through COVID-19 test at the Kern County Fairgrounds. The site is run by the Nonprofit Community Organized Relief Effort, or CORE. They used to have a walk-in test, but now it's drive through only. If you need to get a test, you can go to South P Street, Gate 26. They're open Sunday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. and noon to 2 p.m. All testing sites in Kern County are free, but they will bill your insurance if you have it. Well, now to a deadly crash on the Interstate 5 near the base of the Grapevine. That crash happened just before 6.30 last night in the southbound lanes of I-5 near the truck scales. Now, according to CHP, the driver, a 63-year-old man, veered across traffic lanes and hit a work truck on the right shoulder. The driver then hit a curb and chain link fence before flipping over. The man was thrown from his car and died at the scene. Now, CHP says they believe drugs or alcohol were involved. This is still an ongoing investigation. And we now know the name of one person who died in a late night crash yesterday. Happened at Manor Street and East Roberts Lane. Now, according to CHP, a motorcycle crashed into a guardrail. The passenger, 50-year-old Deidre Lynn Polson, suffered fatal injuries. Now, she was pronounced dead at the scene. It's unclear what caused the motorcycle to crash. This is still an ongoing investigation. And a juvenile is behind bars for a recent shooting in Wasco. Now, this morning, officers arrested the 17-year-old for a shooting that happened back on June 8th. That shooting happened at the intersection of Rose Street and Griffith Avenue. According to KCSO, they found a Hispanic male in critical condition. Due to the extent of his injuries, a homicide unit was called out. Now, that victim remains in critical condition. The 17-year-old is charged with attempted murder and participation in a gang. A structure fire in Wasco damages a firefighting training facility. Now, according to the Kern County Fire Department, on Monday, they were called to a former labor camp complex for a fire. Now, that site is now used for firefighter training. Three units were destroyed along with props used for training. The cause of that fire is under investigation. Now, in your 17 court watch, a man accused of fatally shooting another man in East Bakersfield was in court yesterday. 33-year-old William Blowhart Lee pleaded not guilty yesterday to murder and gun charges. Police say 49-year-old 
Jerry Tibbs Jr. was found shot inside a business in the 700 block of Kentucky Street on June 3rd. Lee was arrested two days later in the 1800 block of Union Avenue. Police said he was in possession of a 9 millimeter handgun believed to be the weapon used in the killing. Now Lee is being held on $2 million bail and is due back in court on July 24th. The pandemic may have changed how you take care of yourself these past few months, but as salons reopen, there are some changes you'll want to be aware of. Salons closed their doors over three months ago due to the coronavirus pandemic. As they slowly begin to reopen their services, they're faced with a variety of new challenges. We can only do one client at a time. And um, when we've had assistance and used to doing two to three clients at a time, that's no longer the case. Um, it is very distant. Um, no, you know, you feel like, oh, I can't touch them. You go to do something and it's like, oh, I can't. So it's just being um, aware of every little step you make. And if you touch something, sanitize it. As soon as you enter the salon, you're greeted with multiple changes. When you arrive, you must wait in your car until they're ready for you. You must wear a mask at all times. Sanitize once you enter the building. Sign a waiver using a sanitized pen and have your temperature checked. And that's all before you even sit down for your service. Hair salon stations are separated with plastic or six feet apart, and the hair washing station is separated too. If you're getting your nails done, the manicurist will have a face shield. Now, hair services have been the only thing available, but getting your nails done or a facial will be available at the end of this week. The nail services, the guidelines came out on the 12th, and so far, even as today, they can start on the 19th, which is Friday. The past few months haven't been easy for anyone. It's just tough. It's tough to run a self-employed business and have everything run right on a good day. But when you have a pandemic going on, it's tough. It really is tough. But businesses like Envy are working harder than ever for their customers. On Friday, nail salons, tattoo parlors, estheticians, and massage parlors will be allowed to reopen under strict guidelines. Now, for all the information on those changes, check out our website, kget.com. Take a look at our almanac, and we're 61 degrees, uh, 4 degrees off the normal. Normal high, still 91 for this time of year. The record on this date, 109, set back in 1961. If you're going to be out and about tonight, your sunset will be at 814. Skies remain clear around the state. No changes on that front for today. In fact, the next seven days, we will continue to see those sunny skies, not only for the interior part of the state, but along the coastal areas. 84 in Sacramento today, 89 in Fresno. Morro Bay at 72, 70s down to the south. If you're traveling east, Vegas, lower 90s, and even a little cooler out of Phoenix, Arizona, they're looking at 102. Now, the beaches today, sunny skies. We'll see a little breeze throughout the afternoon and temperatures in the lower 70s, a high of 72 degrees and a north wind 10 to 15 miles per hour. Throughout the next several days, we will see a warm up. Those triple digits will be back because of this ridge building in from the west. And you can see here, not a lot happening. Uh, even the Pacific Northwest getting a break from the rain as that system has now moved off into parts of Montana. Here's a look at our future cast HD and uh, it keeps us in the clear. Maybe a few high clouds here or there into uh, the weekend, but you can see next week the only thing we may see right around the Tuesday Friday time frame is a few high clouds, but for now I'm going to keep you sunny. Let's take a look at the national forecast for today and the temperatures and we're still relatively mild out of Seattle, 63, 64 in Salt Lake, uh, 91 in Minneapolis today, so a hot day there with 86 in Chicago and then up into the northeast, New York right near 76. Here at home, Air quality will be moderate today with an AQI at 80. And we'll call for a sunny day and right near 89 in Bakersfield. 90 in Delano, 87 out in Taft for the mountains in the Kern River Valley. Sunny, northwest wind 10 to 20. 76 in Fraser Park, 77 in Tatchby with 80s into the Kern River Valley. Lake is at 85 for the desert. Sunny skies and 87 in Mojave. Your extended forecast tomorrow, 96, 99 for your Friday. We kick off summer at 101. 
Father's Day 102. Into the mountains, sunny skies and 83 tomorrow. And then upper 80s as we head into the weekend. And those upper 80s continue through the early part of next week. And then for the Kern River Valley, sunny skies and 90s return by tomorrow with mid 90s on the board heading into Saturday and Sunday. That's look at your forecast. Back over to you. In your 17 Business Watch, BPD and Ridgecrest Police Departments are set to receive funds from the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control. Now that's part of a $3 million grant from the department. The money is going to help reduce alcohol-related harm. That means some of the money will be used to reduce the number of alcohol sales to minors and obviously intoxicated customers. Well, nearly 200 businesses have received thousands of dollars from the county's relief program. That update on the program came Tuesday from County COO James Zervis. He says the loans have funded 183 businesses so far. The program has a $25 million budget offering forgivable loans to local small businesses. Now you can also see where this money is going on the county's website. The Kern Recovers page will show you a map and other details on which businesses have received money from the program. Now you can find it on kerncounty.com. Well, Amazon is hiring soon, and the company is working with Bakersfield College to find new recruits. The company is going over the hiring process during a webinar this afternoon. Now, this is not exclusive to BC students. The webinar is open to the public. There was one session earlier today at 10. Now, the next one starts at 3. We have a hot link where you can register for the event on KGET.com. Now, if you miss it today, the next two sessions will be next Wednesday, June 24th. Well, the popular California fast food chain In-N-Out Burger is getting another location in Bakersfield. The city of Bakersfield planning director confirms the restaurant got conditional approval to put a burger joint at the corner of Rosedale Highway and Coffee Road. The address is where the old Coco's Bakery restaurant used to be before it closed down. Now, it's unclear when that restaurant will open. Well, Regal Cinema says it will reopen by July 10th. Now, that's according to a statement by owner Cineworld Group. The company is actually going to start the process next week, hoping to have all theaters open after July 4th. Now that's in time for blockbusters like Mulan, Wonder Woman, and Tenet, the new film by director Christopher Nolan. Regal operates the Edwards Cinema at the Marketplace in Southwest Bakersfield, but there's no specific date on when that one will reopen. You can enjoy a drive-by firework show on Friday, July 3rd. Now that's happening at Button Willow Park. There will not be any vendors at the event. Playground and restroom areas will be closed. You must stay in your car to watch the event and park six feet away from others. Now that will start at 9 p.m.